Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger, and my friends, this is the Tips and Tricks Guide for Sin, our newest DLC character in Guilty Gear Strive. Now, as always, these videos are on the longer end of things, so everything will be timestamped for your easy use, so skip forward to whatever makes sense for you. That said, before we kind of dive deeper into the character, let's just give you a bit of an overview of what he is. So, Sin is kind of honest, rush down slash pressure boy. A lot of the Guilty Gear Strive characters of DLC since this launch have been very complex characters. Characters like Happy Chaos, Gold Lewis, Jacko. These are characters you can't just plop in and play like everyone else, right? Either due to how do they play or their weird motions or whatever. Sin is about the most straightforward character they have ever released, actually. He just wants to get in your face and rush you down, and it's quite easy thanks to how his mechanics work. On top of his various buttons and specials and all that kind of stuff, the big thing to note of him is the fact he has that little flag meter above the special meter, right? And the flag meter lets him cancel a lot of his special moves. So say if I go for his big poke here, that's the Quarzical Forward Heavy Slash. If I hit Heavy Slash again, as a follow-up, costs one bar. Say I go for this move here, it's rushing low. Do the follow-up, cost one bar, so on and so forth for many of the moves here. If I hit the same button that I do the special move with, I will get a follow-up that costs a singular bar. And also, all the specials can be dash cancelled. And it's really as simple as it looks. Just hit forward forward or the dash macro if you have the button set up for it. And you'll dash cancel any of these special moves. Doesn't particularly matter what it is, they're all dash cancelable. And also, all the follow-ups for all the moves are also dash cancelable themselves. So instead of just burning one bar, you could burn two bars. And yes, the bar itself refills over time. You don't got to belabor it too much. Basically, you can go crazy while the bar is an ongoing thing and you run out of bar, you got to hold back for a little bit. You can't quite do all your crazy offense. But yeah, uh, he's got respectable range on a lot of his moves. Some of the moves, you got to watch the frame data on it because while the range is good, there's more under the hood than you might think, and we'll go over that. But yeah, he's kind of just straightforward rushdown boy, and it's refreshing in a way uh, that there's a straightforward character for once. So that said now, we're going to break down just his general move set and then move on from there. Once again, timestamps everywhere in the video, whatever you want to skip to, go for that. Although if you do use the timestamps, leave a like, please. That'd be very appreciated. Thank you very much. So for his special moves, Sin has five special moves in total, and four of them share the follow-up stamina gimmick where they can use stamina. The other one itself, well, it's the eating move and the eating move itself is basically a gimmick, but we'll go over it. But first we have Beak Driver. So Beak Driver in and of itself is a very long range poke. As you can see, he ain't fooling around here, right? He is using the entirety of that flag to hit. And of course, naturally you can hit closer, but as we'll go on in a later section, you probably want to avoid that for your own safety. Uh, but yeah, so it's the big poke. It's good combo fodder. You're going to be using it in the end of a lot of combos because uh, many moves are either a bit too slow or, uh, say in the case of this move, which we'll talk about in a moment here, doesn't quite have, you know, the range, right? So you're going to use this quite a bit in combos. And it's follow-up. Just hit heavy slash again. It's just Corsica forward heavy slash. So hit the same button again, and he rushes forward. So it naturally combos, which is great, and you can use it in pressure and some gimmicks, which we'll talk about later, which is great. And also the follow-up is safe on block. So it may not be your turn, specifically after the fact, but you can rest assured you're not going to get punished when you do it. It is negative three on block. So all in all, it's pretty much a workhorse of a move. Uh, even like basic poke structural use it, all that kind of stuff. You're going to be using this move a fair bit. Next up is the Hawk Baker. This is Dragon Punch Motion and Slash. And, well, Dragon Punch Motion, it is your Dragon Punch, as it were. So this move is Strike Invincible. So on frame one, you cannot get counter hit, as uh, you can see here. I can just go through his move clear as day. So if you're looking to just blow through an enemy's offense, this is the move. Now, like every other Strike Invincible move in the game, you know, your uppercut style moves, this is Strike Invincible, but you can still get thrown out of the startup. So it's not full Invincible. For that, you're going to have to spend meter, which we'll talk about in a bit here. But yeah, so uh, for all intents and purposes, it's effectively your basic uppercut style move. Hits on the way up and the way down. And like the other moves as well, hit the same button and you get a follow up for one stamina meter. 
The follow-up itself is mostly for combos, although there's a bit of a guessing game attached to it, and we'll go over that later in the video. Next, we have Corsica back and slash, and that is the hook stomp. And this move is a true overhead. So if the enemy is crouch blocking here, as you see here, blocking all my sweeps, my lows, all that fancy stuff here, they cannot block this move. It has to be blocked standing. So that is basically part of your mix-up. It is pretty fast for what it is. 21 frame startup, which is technically reactable. But let me tell you, you're going to catch a lot of people sleeping at the wheel with this. 21 frames for an overhead is pretty friggin' fast, honestly, all things said and told. And yes, like the other special moves, hit the same button again, and you get a follow-up. And the follow-up has a lot of other applications that the other follow-ups do, which we'll go into later in the video. This follow-up is technically by the numbers punishable, negative 8 on block. But with the amount of pushback, for the most part, it's basically safe. So if you don't believe in your overhead, rolling the burden of stamina meter, you can always push them out. Next up, cortical forward and kick. This is the elk hunt. And elk hunt here, well, it's a low because, see here, they're stam blocking just fine, right? So that means between this move and the stomp we showed earlier, he has built-in high-low mix. Simple as that, right? And... That kind of says it all in terms of the pressure game, all that kind of stuff. On top of the usual stuff you can do, you know, frame traps, delaying, all like go for throw, strike throw, all that kind of stuff, right? You have your can pre-baked high-low mix, so you'll catch people eventually. Also, one fun little benefit here is since he's so low to the ground, he can actually go under certain moves. Uh, there's some weaknesses to that, which we'll uh, go over in a bit here. But if you smell certain moves coming, you can very freely go underneath it and hit the enemy. And bonus for counter hits, you can usually follow up with like crouch kick and no sweep or whatever. Like you can get enough advantage to actually get a bit of a combo. And naturally, like the rest, it has a follow up. And this follow up is a bit better than the rest, to be honest. As this guy, not only is it safe on block, it's advantage on block. It is still your turn. Specifically, it is plus eight. So rest assured at any given range that you can definitely reach from, if they try to hit buttons and you try to hit buttons at the same time, you are going to win. So. If you just want to say, you blocked my move, it's still my turn, this is the way to do it. And if you do it right away, it is indeed airtight. There's no real way to get out of it. So as far as the follow-ups go, it's a really good one. And then we have the gazelle step, which is not a move in and of itself, but a move from everything else. So as we went over here, every special has a follow-up, right? And that's all well and good. And on top of the base follow-up you get from every special move, you can also just dash and you'll cancel that move into the dash that is the gazelle step so if you're just looking to poke people try to run in and gimmick people it works and honestly it's really fast like it's easy enough to stop if you expect it like you preemptively hit a button or something but a lot of times people aren't looking for that right and uh, if they're mashing buttons trying to expect it like i'm gonna poke you and then try to dash in and gimmick you and no, it's, it's an easy check, but you have to commit to the check before you see it because it's just too fast to react to, right? So if you're doing this and trying to preemptively check the enemy, you get blown up by the follow-up instead, right? And that's some of the basic mix right there. So it's really good. And also, you can cancel every special into the dash and you can cancel every follow-up into the dash. So that does indeed take two meters instead of one, but still it's an option and it's really good for his pressure. And our final special move, it's called Still Growing, Have to Go Back Punch, and it's a dumb gimmick. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, let's get all the way real, right? So in previous games, Sin's whole thing was eating, and that's great. So this is a reference to that, right? But what does it actually mean in this game? Well, really dumb, really inconsequential buffs. Like, we made a whole video of it. I'll link it if uh, you want to go really in depth to it at the end of this video. But uh, each buff gives you a very 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 small change and each change is random within it there's multiple levels so you can get a bit of health back or you can get like a pixel of health back right and there's no way to control it as far as i can tell it's just purely random and on top of being purely random the item you get is also purely random on top of the effect slash duration of the item right so you're just doing it for fun mostly to go through it really quick the lobster reduces the damage you take by a very, very small amount for a very short amount of time. 
The fish makes you move just a smidge faster for a very short amount of time. And depending on the random level you get, you might not even be able to notice it, to be honest. The meat increases your damage by a very little bit for a very short amount of time. And depending on the level, it actually might not even increase your damage. Ice cream gives you very little amount of tension, your super meter. And the lizard gives you very little amount of your health back. And once again, random amounts, right? So this is mostly a troll move, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, maybe there's a secret evil winning tech down the road. I don't know. But right now, I definitely don't know it. And you're probably better off just, like, actually trying to win the match instead of doing this move. Now let's talk the super moves. The supers are actually uh, pretty interesting. So first up, we got Ride the Lightning. So Ride the Lightning, well, wait a second. I've heard of that one before. Where did I hear of that one before? And of course, naturally, oh yeah, it's his daddy's move, right? Now it's a bit different than his daddy's. So Kai's, it's just like a single move, right? It hits or it doesn't, and then the animation plays out. That's it, right? Sin's is controllable. If you let it just rock and do nothing, it's only a single hit which is not ideal. You actually get to control it uh, up to three times. So the initial hit, and then a follow-up, and then another move. And you also can control the directions. So whatever direction you're doing and you're hitting the uh, heavy slash button, that is the direction he will go into. So you can go like straight up, you can go diagonal, whatever you want, you can do it. So this means, this is also quite good for corner carry, because you get three goes of the move, so as long as you're even remotely near the corner, it's basically a guaranteed wall break. Uh, in fact, if you check the companion combo guide linked at the end of this video, he can literally go corner to corner in a combo. Like, he can wall break you from here using this super. So it's pretty good. Now, another very interesting facet of the super is it's a little bit modular in that it can burn more than just the 50% tension, like half your super bar, right? Like every other super. So if you have extra meter beyond the initial 50%, you can actually burn it in a follow-up attack. It's pretty simple. All you gotta do is just do your initial hits and then hit the button again and he'll explode and do a follow-up. So we'll do an example here just to show it easily connecting. So you just go forward, forward, up, and then explode and it hits and does extra damage. So right now we have our damage values turned on just so we can see what it is. So one, two, three, and the follow-up here, four. 149 damage. But the thing is, you can actually do more depending on how much meter you have. So now we just got the whole King Caboodle here, like full bar, full bar. And you'll notice here, oh wow, okay, that did a lot more damage, right? So this actually becomes a really good finisher if you have the meter for it, because 200 mid-screen, not even including like a wall break or whatever, like that's a lot. And keep in mind too, once again, this is a full invincible move. So strike immune and throw immune. So if you have a full bar and you catch dude mashing, right? This could be like a game over scenario in and of itself. If you have 100% tension to work with. So really interesting super on multiple levels. His other super is Tyrant Barrel. It's basically a Tyrant Rave from Soul, right? And the thing is, there's an interesting mechanic as it has a sweet and sour spot. So if you just do the move by itself, no follow-up, it just hits, right? And it's potentially interesting for like corner combos and stuff, because you can hit after the fact, right? But if you hold the button, and it's just double fireball and punch for the thing, you hold the button, when you let go is when he hits the enemy. And depending on when you let go of the button, different things can happen. So say I just hold it all the way. This is the sour spot. The enemy gets the tech right away, and only did 85 total damage, right? If I let go within a more reasonable time frame, okay, now it did more damage and knocked the enemy back farther, right? And there's a perfect timing right before they hit the ground, and that is the sweet spot where you get the most amount of damage. Right there. So you can see, knock the enemy back the furthest, did the wildly the most amount of damage, right? So that's kind of the sweet spot. It'll, it'll take you a little bit just to get the understanding of it, but it's one of those deals where once you get it, you get it. Basically, just let go of the button right before they hit the ground. Simple as that, right? So if for some reason it's too difficult for you, well, Ride the Lightning's still there. And in a lot of situations, Ride the Lightning's still going to be the go-to just because it's so much more corner carry and like more potential to you know, break the wall. But if you're looking for pure damage, if you can manage to hit the sweet spot, this does do the most damage overall, barring Ride the Lightning with two meters. 
now let's talk notable normals. Obviously, everyone has all sorts of normals. Uh, just, you know, some are more valuable than others, and that's exactly what this section is. So first off, Crouch Punch. Why? It's his fastest move. Simple as that, right? Five frame startup. It's faster than every other movie has. So if you're in that situation where you're just like, get off me, I got to mash or something, this is the button. And easy combo potential. You know, not the most damage in the world or anything, right? But easy hit confirms and go from there. It does. It's not like super advanced or anything. It's quite basic, really. But the basics are the best things in the end, right? So Crouch Punch is your fastest button. So if you need something fast and you need it now, that is the move. Also to note is Crouch Kick. Crouch Kick is six frames, so it's a frame slower, but also has like double the range. So if you're just looking to tag someone low, because it is a true low, just combo in the sweep or whatever. And if you combo in the sweep, well, then you can combo into just about anything, right? And get whatever combo follow-ups. Check the companion combo guide for more on that. It's pretty handy and also pretty handy. Stand Kick. So Stand Kick is one frame slower yet, so seven frames, but also it's just pretty out there, right? Also combos on the sweep, which is good. And just eats up a lot of real estate for a pretty quick button. So once again, not too advanced, but keep in mind it's handy and something you're going to want to use. Now a workhorse move for Sin is Crouch Slash. Now despite what it looks like, it is not a low. Like right here, you see they're not blocking lows. But if you go for this move, they can block it just fine. So it's not a low, but it doesn't need to be a low. What it needs to be is basically your best poke uh, as far as normals go. You do have this as well, and we'll go over that in a different section. Um, but just let's say it's just not as good. Uh, not the least of which is Crouch Slash. At bare minimum is faster than Stand Slash, right? So if you're looking for a poke with speed, this is literally faster and better. It's also very safe. It's negative five on block. So if you do it at any range other than literally point blank touching the enemy, it'll be safe with the pushback. Uh, since it hits, it goes into uh, just pokes pretty easily, like going to beak driver. It's good check, good poke. It's a strong building block of his neutral game, right? This is just good range and good range into the long range. Special poke works out. Also good combo fodder just for going like uh, into basic B&Bs, like close slash naturally goes into crouch slash. And once again, while this would be punishable on block point blank, if you do a close slash, they're not going to get you, right? So it doesn't really matter. It just keeps you safe. And also close slash. Really good. 4-1. It's plus on block, right? So these are both five framers. And since I'm plus one, that means my punch wins out versus Kai's punch. Got big old counter effect. And it's really handy because if you dash cancel the move on counter hit, it combos into itself. Also, seven frame startup, so pretty quick for what it is. Has a lot of combo potential, a lot of pressure potential, has a lot of everything potential. It's a move you'll use a lot. Another fantastic move is his command normal, forward and kick. So he does a big old stomp, and you see, like, hits the ground so hard, rocks and stuff pop up, right? And the beauty of this move here is one, if it hits, it's like a mini juggle. So you can actually quite easily combo from it. Just bounce people up, whatever you want to do, you can do it. Easy peasy, right? If you're a little further out, maybe you don't get close slash, but you still get a kick and you, and you go from the kick into another command normal or whatever. And of course, naturally, you can go into a super as well. And from here, mid screen, we talked about the supers, easy wall break, big damage. So good. It is also a low. So that's handy. Another low for the arsenal. And perhaps most importantly of all, it is advantage on block. So every time they block, we are going first. End of story. It is that simple. Like we talked about how close slash is a seven frame move. If we do this point blank, even doing as fast as possible move at five frames, Kai cannot beat out our close slash. The worst that happened right there, you see, is a trade. If I'm slow, if I'm fast, he'll never beat me. If I'm slow, then we still get a trade. So lesson there is well, don't be slow, I guess, right? Time your stuff correctly. But yeah, so easy combos on hit plus on block. The only thing I guess I could throw as a negative is the move in and of itself is not terribly fast comes in at 21 frame startup so it's not the quickest move on the block when it comes to just like a basic poke up close but still plus on block combo on hit what else like it's everything you could ever hope for this is an amazing normal straight up enforces its own mind games quite easily i do the move and you block right all right if you want to hit a button well my buttons are gonna win 
If you just want to block and be passive, then I can throw you. Or I can go for another low, or I can go for my gimmick overheads, like all that kind of stuff, right? It's just simple as that. So it's a great move. Other great move, 6P. So that's the universal anti-air button. And uh, his is about what it looks like, right? So very, very far range, very anti on the anti-air. If it connects, easy peasy super or whatever you want to follow up with, right? Like, okay, from like halfway across the screen, even further back than that, actually, you know, I counter hit you with your jump and then I wall broke you for some pretty respectable damage, right? So it's just really good. And his jump dust. Very interesting, as it's a dive kick. So this is not a special move. This is a normal, and thus obeys the rules of normals, like jumping normals, in that, like, a jumping normal, you can jump cancel it. So this dive kick, you can jump cancel it. So you can let it fall through, or you can, like, oh, I hit, and I can jump backwards and try it again. All sorts of interesting little gimmicks like that. The move in and of itself, well, it just plain isn't safe on block, right? But thankfully, we don't gotta play by the rules here. The move is negative on block, yes, but you're allowed to cancel the recovery when you touch the ground into a special move. And now all of a sudden that guaranteed punish on block? Nah, you can just change it up, right? So you can do any special you wanna do. And uh, a lot of people, if they're just gonna try to jab you back specifically, the overhead can go over a lot of low pokes and Elk Hunt here can actually low profile certain buttons here. So he actually low profiled his jab. That's how low to the ground he is. So you can do whatever you want, basically. It kind of promotes reckless play, to be honest, but well, this is Guilty Gear, right? So go nuts. And while less notable, I suppose, just as a heads up, certain moves uh, interact oddly with uh, certain characters, like say uh, 6P. So 6P, if you're doing like a block string here, works out just fine, right? Like, here's our combo, we got it, and we can connect and do whatever. But if I were to add another hit, then it would whiff. But it wouldn't whiff if they were standing. So keep that in mind. Certain moves, it matters if they're standing or not, right? Also, uh, stand punch will not hit crouchers. And more to the point, it won't hit Giovanna, like, at all. <laughs> I can't hit her unless she's like airborne. Like it's, it's just it's not that kind of move. And Javon is a very silly character, and she kind of goes uh, under everything, as you can tell. So just keep that one in mind. Now, to talk about certain moves here, we mentioned how not to use stand slash, use crouch slash instead, right? Let's go into that and some other moves because you gotta watch out for that frame data. So watching out for that frame data, what exactly does that mean, like? Are the numbers that bad? Well, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, my mid-screen poke gets punished. So if this gets punished, well, what about other big pokes? You know, well, like, let's see here. Oh, that got punished. He poked my stick and I got punished. Say I'm a little too close when I do my move. Oh, that's a punish too. I hit, like I actually hit him and he still punished me. And if we take it to its logical conclusion, like, if Potemkin can, can punish you with his crouch kick, that means he can link in the sweep, which means it's time for the whole roller coaster pressure to start, right? So these moves are fairly negative. Stand slash is negative eight on block. So that's a fair bit to be. And as you saw earlier, you're like, you can be far away and still get tapped and punished while doing it. Beak driver, your special poke is negative 14 on block, meaning at all but like the max ranges, most characters can actually fairly easily punish it. So the lesson here is use these at the max ranges. Do not do it any closer than that. So if you're looking just to poke people out, make sure you're actually poking people and you're not deep in. Now conversely, at least for Beak Driver, the follow-up always is negative three. And it is negative three with some pushback, so a lot of moves will just actually whiff if they try to tap you off to the fact. But you do lose your turn effectively. If they try to commit with something a little longer range, you're still negative and you'll get beat out. But just be careful, please. Because he's been out for a little bit now, but I see people are still being very willy-nilly and uh, don't fully appreciate how rough some of his moves are on block. So please watch out. Now, going from bad frame data, let's go to good frame data. So Elk Hunt, this guy here. As we went over earlier in the video, the follow-up 
is advantage on block. And it's a pretty big advantage on block as it's plus eight. The thing is, being plus eight, you know, you can still smoke people out of moves, but when there's that amount of pushback, they're less incentivized to mash buttons. But once again, remember that every move can be dash cancelled and every follow-up can be dash cancelled as well. And here's the thing. Elk Hunt's follow-up move, the big power punch fist thing, I don't got a name for it really, but whatever that is, if you do the follow-up dash from it, you are still advantage on block. So I still win here with counter, but now if I go in, as you can see, I still win. Now, here's the thing. Is this basically free pressure? You better believe it. In fact, it's so plus, if you time it right, they can't even get a button in, right? I do believe it's plus six all in all. So if you time it correctly, they can't even have enough time to mash if you go for a very fast button. You'd have to go for a slower button like stand slash, something like that, right? But yeah, so it's easy big pressure. You can be in and plus whenever you want. The only cost is this does take two bars of stamina. One to do the follow-up and another to dash cancel the move. But still, to be guaranteed plus and pressuring someone in their face and either lock down or give them a chance to get out if you want. Whatever works for you, right? You can do either. That is a very, very, very strong thing to have. Because at that point, okay, free pressure, wait a second, throw you. Free pressure, wait a second, go for lows. Free pressure, go for the overhead and like Roma cancel it or something, like whatever you want, right? Very few characters can just say, I'm here, this is happening, and you got a deal, right? And Sin can do exactly that, just admittedly at a fairly steep cost of two of his stamina bars. But still, the option is there and it's a very strong option, so keep that in mind. Elk Hunt, follow up dash, you're directly on top of them and plus in their face and there ain't nothing they can do about it. As far as options go, it's a pretty good one. Okay, and the next section is all about the follow up. So that's what the last section was about as well, but a bit more broad this time because it's a very big part of the character. It's very important. Now we've gone through a lot already of just, you know, what's punishable, doing your follow up, that kind of stuff here. But the thing is the follow ups, if you want them to be, they are all airtight. Like, yes, this move here, the big driver by itself, yeah, sure, whatever. Big punish from full screen, basically. But if I do my follow-up, no fuss, no muss. And of course, as we mentioned several times, follow-up is completely safe. So that's great. But what if we want to give them the opportunity to try to punish it, right? So, like, you know, he can hit a button, and at most ranges, he can tap us after the fact. And if we do our follow-up, we're safe, for sure. But what if we just delay it just a smidge? And, oh, would you look at that. So now if they're compelled to hit a button after our special, we can actually use that directly to our advantage. And in this scenario, too, here, that sliding uh, counter hit, you can get a follow-up. All you have to do is, once again, if you recall, you can dash cancel any special or any special follow-up. And then there you go, right? Easy peasy. You see the counter hit, you just hit forward forward or the dash macro, whatever you got to work with, and get extra hits. And of course, naturally, this applies to basically everything, right? Like say the overhead. The overhead in and of itself is not terribly safe on block, as you can see. But if we delay, we can do the follow up and blow the enemy away. And of course, if we do the follow up right away, you know, it's a true block string. They get no opportunity to hit us back right away, but the idea is just to give them a little bit of room to breathe, to want to try to do it. And of course, if they don't, then you can start just getting away with stuff and just do your move and then go right back on offense if they don't try to challenge. But the idea is to let them try to challenge and then smack them in the head for doing it. Like we talked uh, before about Elk Hunt, like this is plus on block and that's great. But if we just delay just a little bit, that turns into a counter hit if they try to challenge. If they don't, we still get our plus on block move. That's great. But if they did try to challenge, they get blown away. And then boom, pretty substantial damage. Now, yes, obviously in this scenario, that burned quite a bit of stamina. But if the damage is there, why not do it? Much the same here, you have your uppercut, right? And obviously the uppercuts are punishable. They kind of have to be. But you can hit your follow up and try to challenge their punish. So all of a sudden, things aren't as guaranteed as they seem to be, right? 
And of course, naturally, if we wait it out, you see it, we can dash and we can go into combo or whatever, right? And this, once again, just like the rest, can be made airtight, but making it airtight doesn't necessarily make it you know, that much safer, right? So giving the opponent a chance to master your stuff, that is what a lot of what Sin's offense is all about with his specials. Because you can get your big time counter hit combos and have a lot of fun from there. Now, to note specifically about his uppercut reversal. Now, while you can do the follow up and bop them for trying to hit the button, right? That's great. Uh, keep in mind there's a gap. So the first and second hits are not airtight. They can react after blocking the first hit into something uh, in between when the uh, second hit would connect. So therefore, they can go for their own uppercut or whatever, and that would be guaranteed. So some of this predicates on the enemy being a little slow on the ball. As the game advances and people are more accustomed to sin, I feel as soon as they block the first hit, the second hit's never going to happen. They're just going to take their punish right away. But for now, it's still something just to keep in mind, right? But yeah, leaving purposeful holes to let the enemy try to punish your move, that works out. And of course, for a lot of these, not all of these, but a lot of these... If you space correctly and they try to go for their own DP as a punish, because it's invincible, therefore it wouldn't fall for the follow-ups, you can make it in spaces so that would whiff or just you'd still be able to block. Next up is a very fun thing to do here. Technically, it's universal, but Sin can make better use of it than most. And that is Kara cancelling, otherwise known as empty cancelling, your specials into supers. So, as of Season 2, one of the big changes is you can cancel the startup of any special into a super. And some characters, like, say, Potemkin. Potemkin can make fantastic use of this, right? And most of the cast, not as much, honestly. But Sin is definitely one of the characters that can heavily benefit from this. Because it makes some of the classic rules of this game look like you're breaking the rules. Like, normally, can you super cancel a special in this game? No, absolutely not. You cannot. But you can sure make it look like you can because... Sure looked like it, right? So what happened there is I did my special and then I did my dash cancel, which counts as a special, and I canceled the beginning of the dash cancel into my super. Now, for some of these, it's actually quite easy. So like, say, the tyrant super, right? It's double quarter circle forward, right? So that contains two forwards, a.k.a. the dash, in the motion itself. So if I just go for my poke and then I go for the tyrant super... It counts the two forwards as the dash, and then just you hit the button and immediately goes into it. So easy peasy. Like legitimately here, just do whatever combo you're going to do, and just do the super, and it'll automatically dash cancel for you because it's just how the nature of the, the motion works. And then you go for special into a super. That's really good. Much the same logic, say, and we'll just use Beat Driver as our special example here. Uh, if you wanted to use Ride the Lightning instead, right? That's obviously a more complex motion. But the thing is, starts with a forward to back and then ends in another forward. And if you do it fast enough, that counts as forward forward for the dash. So I'll just do my special. Now immediately just go into my super. And there you go, right? Simple as that. So the thing is that... You need to be a little quick, to be honest with you, right? And it's going to take you a little bit of practice. But you can also cheat it. You don't need to work as hard as you think you have to, thanks to the magic of the dash macro. The dash macro, even though it's only a single button press, counts as you hitting forward forward, right? And you can use that to buffer in uh, whatever you're going to do, and it just works. So once again, same example here. We'll do this, and we'll do the motion here, and we'll just hit dash macro and heavy slash at the same time. Simple as that, right there. So hit dash macro and heavy slash at the same time, or you can hit dash macro just a little bit first and then hit heavy slash, like a, a plank motion, if you will. But yeah, so it can make it just that easy, right? So you can do it the quote unquote hard way, which isn't that hard because both your supers end with double forward in a way, either naturally or forward, and then do the motion and do another forward, or you can just use the dash macro to cheat. It's really that cut and that dry. Do whatever your combo is going to be, do your special, and then instead of uh, doing your proper follow up, just have the dash cancel go into the super, and it works. Like it can be from anything. So that's the other example here. Uh, it could be from the slide. It could be from the poke. Whatever you want, right? It just works. It's extra damage. Practice it. Do it. It's worthwhile. So just a quick section here talking about low and high profiling moves. 
So as we went over here, say something like a basic fireball here, elk hunt, and very easily go under it. And of course, if you go under it and you hit, well, then you can get counter hit combos, go from there. Good stuff, right? Could be something simple like this. Like we got our hit, that's cool. Follow up, there you go, right? Doesn't need to be super fancy, but you can go under that kind of stuff. But he's very low to the ground is what I'm trying to really tell you here. Like say, pokes, yeah. Goes under that just fine. Something like Crouch Light Punch, which is very low to the ground. Yeah, he can go under that. It fails to hit. Like a lot of big time moves you see to use control neutral for a lot of characters. For the most part, he can actually pretty easily go under it. Now, obviously things like, you know, Crouch Kick, Sweep, those are literally like scraping the ground. He cannot go under those. But a lot of moves that are hard to challenge, he can just easily go under it. So I really want you to keep that in mind. It's very valuable in that way. Now, here's the thing, as always, there's a catch, right? Some moves are lower to the ground than you think. Despite what it looks like, it is actually like all the way low to the ground and it will bop you if you try to go underneath it, right? So it's one of those deals that hopefully you know, but the Potemkin player does not, because if they do, they will shut down your shenanigans very fast. Like, say another one you would really want to be able to go under, uh, Ramlethal, Stand, Slash. Unfortunately, I got bad news for you. Not happening. Just low enough to the ground that it doesn't work. So a lot of moves that look like big pokes, yes, you can absolutely go under them. Uh, some of the better moves in the game, though, you cannot, unfortunately. Like in Ramlethal's case, even Stand, Heavy Slash, you can't go underneath it, right? So it's kind of a character-to-character -character basis, but it can actually really inform the matchup. Because if you are allowed to slide under a lot of your opponent's garbage, then that's good and it helps you dictate the pace. Although just unfortunately, you know, Sin's not exactly super top tier character, right? So against a lot of the super top tier characters, uh, they're going to be able to do their same stuff and it's going to be about the same as it ever was. And you're going to have to play honestly around it. Now, to give you some just a little bit of tech to end things off, uh, Sin... Not necessarily Mountain's Attack, at least in this early stage, but I'll give you a nice save jump setup. And it's off a basic throw, which is handy, because throw, like, regardless of the character you play, you're always going to be doing a lot of throws, right? It's really as simple as simple gets. All you got to do is throw the enemy, me. tiny dash forward, then jump. And if they do something like, say, an Invincible Reversal, and Soul here doing his uh, uppercut is tied for fastest uppercut, right? So that's as good an example as any, right? We can just go in, little dash, jump. And block if it hits, right? We want specifically slash. Why slash? Why not heavy slash? Yes, heavy slash works too, just so you know. Heavy slash works too, absolutely. And it does do more damage, absolutely. But uh, there's one little issue. Uh, unless you have literally frame perfect timing, heavy slash will lose to 6p on wake up. Now it can beat 6p, or at the very least, uh, you can block in time, right? But. It's difficult. Like, once again, we're talking frame perfect timing, and that's for suckers, right? But if you do jump slash, due to its lower angle, it counter hits the 6P, because once again, 6P has a lot of invincibility to it, yes, but on the lower body, it doesn't really kick in, right? So since it hits so low to the ground, it beats 6P. So if your timing is a little less than perfect, you still just block, right? Just hold down back. But if your timing is more on the ball, you counter hit him. So there you go. So as always, the save jump uh, spirit is simply, I do my move, I attack you while jumping. If you're there to be hit, either I hit you or you block or whatever, the attack goes through. But if you're any kind of invincible, I land in time to block. And it's very simple. Just throw him, run forward just a little bit, and then jump and slash. Counter hits them if they 6P, and if they do a reversal, then you land time to block. Easy peasy, awesome. And that's Sin in a nutshell. Uh, once again here, as far as DLC characters go and Guild Gear Strive, uh, most, not all, but most of the DLC characters have been quite complex. And uh, Sin, he's just straightforward, honest rushdown boy, to be honest with you, right? So I do find that mildly refreshing. Uh, certainly no happy chaos, certainly no jacko or anything like that. Uh, he just beats your head in with a stick, and that's pretty cool. As far as tier placements go, of course, naturally, it's a bit early, right? I'll definitely say he's not top tier. I'll say that. Some people argue he's lower tier. I don't know if it's quite that dire. 
I think maybe a bit more middle of the pack. Uh, now, there is a big balance patch coming up and not too long after I make this video, a couple weeks after I make this video. Now, if it's anything like previous times when the DLC comes out and the balance patch comes out after, I do not expect him to have any major changes. So if you're watching this like a month or two from now when I make it, he's almost certainly about the same character. Like maybe one moves like one frame different or something like that. Like same thing happened in the Testament where there was a patch and Testament didn't change, right? So I don't expect a big changes, so everything should be valid for quite some time. But uh, yeah, so as it stands, Sin, straightforward. That's good. I like it. And hopefully you like it too. All that said, though, we are now at the end of the video. This is a longer video, so if you could spare a like, I would sincerely appreciate it. And otherwise, well, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Guilty Gear.